All right, so patch notes for the new seasonal catastrophe festival is here. And uh, we're going to take a look at all the stuff coming. Now, <laughs> I've already seen the banner. So, if you guys don't know, this is a new festival coming up. And true back-to-back -back festivals. I, I was told, right, that it's good that there's no collab right now because, you know, anniversary just happened. It would be too much for free-to-play players. Boom! Festival, all right? But the banner is so bad, I would say this might be a must-skip. Like, the character is really good. I'm gonna have to reread what she does because it's so convoluted, the stuff that she does, but... And we got better translations now, but this banner is just atrocious. So DK is the best character in this banner. He's already on his way out. Best PvP character. I guess best character in the banner is actually LR Liz. Not counting the new character, of course, like the other characters. LR Liz is probably the best character in this banner. DK, out of all the... So the festival selection is just absolute filthy garbage. DK is on his way out, okay? Next demon that comes out, you know who's getting kicked off the demon team? It's DK. It's not gonna be DK Melly. It's not gonna be Gelda. Probably not gonna be Chandler, he's gonna be in the back still. It's gonna be Demon King. Zaldrus, alright? He's, get, he's getting kicked out. Light Liz? The OG one? Not even the new one? The OG one? Red the end? Dude. There's already a better version of this DM, the green one. Couldn't you have put her in the banner? I know, I know, I know. She was in the last banner. She was in, in not last, but she was in the, in the Percival banner. I don't care. I don't, so was LR Liz. So was LR Liz. So I don't care, right? Purgatory Mally is crazy because he's completely irrelevant. Like there's zero, zero activities in the game this guy is optimal zero in any activity you could use purgatory melee in you could use a better melee with this Asterosa already out he's he's been out on pvp like you can use him eh. he's been out and he's old merlin's old i what is this banner dude they they couldn't put hell in here this character this new character has, like, units she's meant to be run off, and none of them are here. Maybe Tyr. We don't know, actually. We'll have to see, but, like, no hell? No Festival Gaffer. Dude, they could have put Festival Gaffer in here. The thing is, Festival Gaffer was the first seasonal festival, right? This is the second seasonal festival. Should have put him in here! It's the same kind of banner! No Chaos Arthur hasn't returned yet, either. No Gelda! No Gelda! I lose my voice, I'm screaming. What is this banner? It's just garbage. It's just so bad. Who here is like relevant? Okay, Red Margaret was just in the anniversary banner. I assume you pulled her. Okay? I assume you pulled her. Deanne has been given out for free so many times. Fur has been given out for free so many times. I don't know, man. This, this banner is just atrocious, but the character is pretty good. <laughs> so, look how long this bastard of a passive is. It's mainly the blue text, right? But it's because she's applying so much stuff to the enemies. Thankfully, we can read it better. So, I don't like putting a wall of text on screen for you guys to read with me, but, like, we're gonna have, like, you're gonna have to hold my hand on this one. Like, seriously. Th this is the most convoluted passive we've ever had. And I feel like I say this every festival. Like, <laughs> I feel like every festival that comes out, I'm like, man, this is the new most, like, convoluted passive we've ever had. And then a new festival comes out, and I say the same thing again, because it just gets worse and worse. But, let's hold my hand, right? They need to do, okay, they need to do, like, Dokkan. I'm sorry to bring up Dokkan. I know. I know, but, like, okay. If I go on Troop's channel, he probably has a video on the new UI Goku, right? And I was, uh, I was with him on this stream, so I was like, look at the way they 
they make passives. They show up passives in Dokkan, right? It's like separated in categories. Like it's the... Each individual thing is like a line. It still could be better. Like some websites have it better. Like, uh, like the wiki, but... Dude, it's incomparable. Incomparable. At the start of battle, apply Shadow Shield for one turn to the unit, which is taunt taunts the enemy? <gasps> that was not in my translations. Taunts the enemy? Decreases unknown allies damage taken by 20% and extra 30 for herself. At the start of allies turn, when the number of enemies present in the battlefield is over 2, apply Deepening Illusion to the enemy with lower HP percentage based on their max HP, and apply Regular Illusion to the other enemies. So, Deepening Illusion, when removed, apply Deepening Mental Breakdown. Illusion, when removed, applies Mental Breakdown. That's what I'm gonna have reading this passive. Deepening Mental Breakdown is minus 20% attack related stats, effect removed when damaged by enemies at the enemy's turn, and when removed, stuns the unit for one turn. Okay, so, this is what I was very confused about, because on Translate, it wasn't showing me this. So what happens is, she applies Deepening Illusion, right? And when she attacks, so when the unit attacks, the enemy with Delusion effect removes all deepening illusion and illusion apply to the enemy. So, delusion is part of her skill. Delusion is her first skill. So, when she attacks with this first skill, she removes the deepening illusion and illusion. And then it gives them deepening mental breakdown and mental breakdown, which is minus 20% accurate stats. And then she has to attack again. Or anyone, like anyone on your team has to attack them, and then Deepening or Mental gets removed. And once those get removed, Deepening stuns the enemy. Regular Mental Breakdown seals single target or AoE skill for one turn. Interesting. So th this is the problem I had with my translation, was that it was saying that it sealed single target and AoE skills, but on the gameplay, it was not doing that. So, I guess it's random? That's weird. I don't like being- I don't like it being random, potentially. But yeah, so she has like this one-two punch. She has to first remove the deepening and the regular illusion, and then after that, someone else has to attack again, you, I guess you don't have to attack, you're still applying minus 20% attack related stats, which is a very severe debuff. But if you're facing Escanor, then, you know, you can't debuff him. You stun. Hmm. Okay. Also, when the unit attacks the enemy with Dark Shadow effect, so Dark Shadow is her other card. We'll get to the cards in a bit. Apply Remnant to the unit for every damaged enemy by Dark Shadow effect. Remnant is crit defense plus 20, up to 3 times. And once she, once she max stacks those Remnants, which is just 3, so if you do 1 AoE, it max stacks it, right? Applies another Shadow Shield. So she taunts again, she re-taunts. Man, th this ability would be so OP for Demonic Beast Battle, but I am... I'm, I'm... I don't feel like she... Unless... The, the only Demonic Beast where this would work is... Um, the Squirrel, right? Only the Squirrel would work, because there's like three enemies. She's probably not gonna apply those the debuffs, you know, the stun and the ceiling, obviously not, that would be too OP, if she does then it's crazy, if she, if she could taunt every single turn, and give the, I mean there's no other unknown, but, yeah but then you have to remove, I don't know, you can't remove Valenti, you can't remove your bleed character, 
LR Liz is so important as well. You'd have to remove DK Melee. Oh, whatever. Uh, also, she has a bond, which is the same thing that Roxy has. Increases the unit with the bond, so the unit she links to. Attack early stats by 13, and defense early stats by 5. There's no condition on this. It can be on any character. This can be on any character. They want you to 6 6 this character with this god awful banner. <laughs> this god awful banner, man. Oh my god. I'm not, by the way. I'm doing one rotation. I'm. I'm not. Uh, yeah, her skills. So, I mean, okay, now, with proper translation, her passive is not that confusing. When I was, like, fighting for my life with Google Translate, it was, like, impossible to decipher what she did, but with, with proper translations, you know, you, you, get the, you get the gist of it, right? She has this taunt, damage reduction for the allies, and she applies these debuffs. Now, the thing is, I feel like you need help, right? Because or else, DK Mallies are just gonna insta-cleanse. The stun, the seal, whatever it may be, right? So you need hell to apply more debuffs so that that doesn't get, you know, removed. And even then, if you time it wrong, Mally gets a full cleanse anyways. But this is the one thing with debuffs. DK Mallies are real. And this character is red. So keep that in mind, right? So her cards. Uh, first skill is Delusion. Again, that's the card that's going to be uh, removing the Deepening Illusion and Illusion effects. Per chance times 2. For every Deepening Illusion or Illusion, increases crit, crit damage by 50% when using skill. Okay. You got So you got to use it like as your first attack anyways. Makes sense. <clears throat> and then the Dark Shadow skill. Pierce Ray times 3. When attacking an enemy with deepening mental breakdown or mental breakdown which is you know it's the one true punch right you're gonna do one skill then do the other kind of like bond but aoe increases attack only stats by 40 when using a skill for every dead enemy increase damage by 20 percent i don't like that as a condition that much but it's not bad actually because theoretically since it's an aoe skill it's gonna get worse and worse the more enemies die because if there's only two enemies in the field, there's only two, you know, characters to be hit by the AoE, it's going to be less DPS overall than a single target. But... She gets damage increase, so... Her ult. Now, her ult has a passive. So she is pay Like, she's paid to win through through. She has the bond, she has the an ult passive. Applies deepening mental breakdown to all enemies and increase attack release by 50 for two turns. Also removes all debuff effects applied to the unit except deepening and mental breakdown. And inflicts spike, which is... Uh, Double crit damage for enemies. Now, her ult passive, when the unit is on the battlefield, for every deepening illusion or illusion removed from the enemies, increase basic stats by 5% up to 50. Now, what is that at 1-6? Okay, I'm gonna need to... I'm gonna need the Google Translate back. Uh, What's with that zero? Okay, I'll be right back into translate this. Okay, so yeah, uh, if you have her 1 6, the 50% uh, basic stats cap at 10% basic stats. A whole 40% basic stats is locked behind 6 6 in this character. And then you can see the, the gradual increase 15, 20, 30. 40% basic stats is nuts, by the way. It's a huge difference. This might be one of the worst pay to win ults. It has to be. 40% basic stats is crazy. 40% more HP in attack? 40% more HP? Dude, the amount of fighting I've been doing for other categories of characters to get a 30% basic stat buffer like Nanashi. And this woman, <laughs> this God-blessed woman, she needs 6-6 six, six for 40. That's more than Anasha gives. Oof. Oof. 
Interestingly enough, uh, if you don't have, if you have her one six, her ult does not remove debuffs from her. That's such an odd thing. And her ult does a lot. You, you need ults for like so much stuff here. Oh, let me show her ult. I guess uh, since we're here, since we're here, anyways. Doesn't have audio, but I'm I'm too scared, Joe. It's cool. I'm surprised the alt fits in the uh, the YouTube shorts here. To be honest, I swear it was super long. Right. Again, banner is giga stinky. Right? Don't need me to tell you twice. Uh, so new chapter two for catastrophes is coming out. So there's gonna be like a evil catastrophe. Weren't the catastrophes already evil? I what didn't they go like I guess they went through like um I don't know, the, the lore is very confusing. They went through this like back and forth between them and now they're good or something like that. I don't know. I remember playing the events when they were coming out and it like whatever. Uh outfits for the character, new card set. No, no, I mean, there's new cards every time. Attack related stats for goddess allies will increase by up to 5% when goddesses are under a buff effect. And damage dealt to enemies increased by 5%. Not bad. Not bad card, sir. Holy Relic for Camilla. It's actually a pretty good Holy Relic. Uh, unfortunately, the character su sucks, but it even works in the back. Increases the attack related stat. Oh, no, the attack. Sorry, not attack related. Attack and Pierce of Unknown Allies by 20% uh, if they have 4 or less ult gauge. I don't know why they had to include this, by the way. They could just, she could have just given it, you know what I mean? Also, if you use a skill... Or, I think... Yeah, if the enemy uses a skill on their turn, right? Their attack related stats get reduced by 5% for one turn. I thought this stacked, but it's, it's just one. It's just one five percent. Eh. Festival, dude. At, at this point, they should just put you are not you are, but they should they should put the dark and light characters in here. Like, you are festivals are already a thing. Whatever. Whatever, man. Uh, bundles, as always. They're not gonna do anything for this. Like, this character is very unhyped. Like, come on. Like, uh, there's gonna be the the, the gooners, right? On my wife will. But like, realistically, this character is highly on hype. And it's not even near any character from the actual series gonna be in terms of relevancy, right? In, ter in terms of like hype and, and how much people actually want the the character for the character, right? They should give like something like they did with Kusak, where if you summon the character again, actually dupe for free. The character is highly, 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 highly dupe heavy anyways. Events, 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 events. Oh, they're bringing this back. Nice. I need I need some some cards I missed. I like that. Uh, Hawk, mine, events, events, events. Just rehashed events, nothing new. Like, the, this guy. Nothing, no new events. It's just rehashed garbage. You need to spend 900 for the SSR costume, as always. Uh, Hawk Pass. I never finished my Hawk, Hawk Pass. I just realized. New uh, Percival Alpha in the Hawk Pass. I never finished the, the last Hawk Pass. I think it, the way they did it now, it's like very inconvenient. I'm not gonna lie. You, you really need to go for the missions. Oh, these are the changes they, they talked about in the dev notes. Okay. So you can do times five speed. On gear rolling, okay. Three times speed, yeah, the three times speed is already in the game. Nice. Three times speed for Hero Arena, Demonic Beast Battle, Trading Cave, and Underground Labyrinth. Dude, three times speed in Underground Labyrinth? Mmm. That's what, that, that's nice. That's really nice. You can open up to 100 cards at a time. Card packs, that's good. UI improvement for the inspect option. Hmm. 
Okay. When you tap with an ally buff or debuff, a pop up appears that allows you to check the details. When you enter the pop up, you can check details about each character. Cool. I mean, this really it's a nice improvement because uh, I always felt like uh, like checking the character debuff and buff details was incredibly inconvenient. Is that just scroll down? Oh, it shows like this now. Buffs and debuffs will be horizontal. If the buffer debuff and numbers of turns are applied the same, the accuracy will be displayed together. Okay. And now there's a, a number of like stacks. It's like he has two balls. Instead of being like 50 of the same buff or debuff, one after the other, you have to scroll through. That's nice. That is nice. Oh, now you can toggle between normal and hell right here. Okay. You can do the, the bulk toggle or skip. Filter for LRs. You can bulk upgrade outfits now, which is nice. You can do multiple awakening stars at the same time, but like th this was already a feature. And it was converting your materials into the super awakening, not super, but the, the like nice awakening star that did it all at once anyways. But whatever. Oh, now it shows the percentage of the, the bar here on dude just make allow me to hammer it man just let me hammer it please uh some bug fixes i'm not gonna read them okay now uh, the caution for asking her is purchasable as well cool i mean i'm not gonna lie i think the character is very good i I am unbiased. If a character is good, or if I find the character to be good or not, I will say it how I think, no matter who it is. It's just how it is, right? It is what it is. Hell was OP. I hate Hell. But she was OP, and I acknowledge that she was good. I think this character is very good, but... Man, the banner is so bad. Can I really recommend a free-to-play player to spend 900 gems, or more, because you need dupes for her, on this piece of garbage? I don't think so. Right after anniversary? I don't know, man. 